Well, here's another problem on applying the conditions for equilibrium. It's the walk the plank problem. Now let's say a person oh, whose mass is maybe 50 kilograms is walking along and they find a downed log. The log has a mass of 150 kilograms and maybe the whole log is 10 meters long. But you can see a portion of the log, we can just call D, sticks out over the edge of some cliff and I don't know, what, what's a good reason the person would want to walk on the log? Maybe, I don't know, maybe there's a hundred dollar bill that got stapled or pegged to the end of this log. Uh, don't ask why, just for the sake of argument here, huh? And so the person hops on and proceeds to walk. So we could ask a couple questions. One, if we know their masses and we were given how much hangs out over the edge, then how far from the edge, call that x, how far could they walk in their attempt to retrieve the money? Or the other way we could say is, we'll assume they could walk all the way to get the money, so then how much of the log could hang out over the edge? So we can ask the question either way. Um, it's the same approach. Net torque has to equal zero. Net force has to equal zero. I think we can solve the problem just by putting emphasis on the idea that the net torque has to be zero. So before we can calculate net torque, we have to picture all the forces that are acting. So let's see. Let's locate the center of mass of this log. We'll say it sits right about here. So then there's a force of gravity that pulls down at that point. That represents the weight of the log. Then we've got another force of gravity pulling down here, let's we'll say that's the weight of the person, so we got capital MG for the weight of the log, lowercase mg for the weight of the person, and then in order to calculate the torque due to these forces, we need some axis of rotation. Oh, I suppose there's another force, right? There's normal force. After all, for net force to equal zero, the sum of all upward force has to equal the sum of all downward force. Well, we've identified two downward forces, so what's the upward force that accounts for that? Well, that's normal force. So where is it applied? Well, as the log sits in this position, some of the normal force pushes up here, some of it pushes up here. Normal force is distributed all across the surface until, until this person walks just far enough that it just barely begins to rotate. And in that case, the log is going to sit, well, hopefully not in this position, but you get the idea, right? If the log does start to rotate, now there's only one contact point, and the normal force has to act entirely at that point. So I've got an idea. Let's select this point as our axis of rotation. If that's the case, we don't need to involve the normal force because it would be non-torque producing since it acts right at the axis of rotation. So really, all we're going to suggest is that the weight of the log produces some counterclockwise torque about this axis while the weight of the person produces some clockwise torque. And if we can balance those torques, then we can suggest right at the tipping point, equilibrium is established based on the net torque equals zero. So let's look at this a little more carefully and re-diagram the problem with all the given values. So we've got it, the log is 10 meters long, the person's 50 kilograms, the log's 150 kilograms, and we have to figure out how much of the log can hang out over the edge. So we can see the money is attached to the end of the log. Um, or the other question could be, how far from the edge or from the axis of rotation can he safely walk, right? X equals question mark. So let's say we were given this distance D, then how far could he walk? Let's create an equation to calculate for that. In fact, what if we didn't know the exact mass or length? What if we just kept all these uh, symbolic? So capital M, lowercase m, l, and d in order to
to solve for x. Okay, so it starts with step number one, sum of all torque equals zero, which means all of the clockwise torque has to balance out all of the counterclockwise torque. Let's look at this picture labeled again a little more carefully. Solve for x. Notice we've labeled L over 2, the distance from the end of the log to the center of mass. So what we're really interested in is just this little distance right here. Right? How far is the center of mass, which is going to be the point at which the force of gravity for the log is acting, how far is that from the axis of rotation? Well, I guess it's just the difference between, uh, we'll call this R, right? What's the value of this R, this lever arm? Uh, I believe that R is nothing more than L over 2 minus D, correct? Okay. So the clockwise torque is due to the weight of this person. So that's equal to, like any torque, it's force times lever arm. So we've already labeled his lever arm as x. So force times lever arm times sine theta, well, the angle between his force vector and the lever arm is 90 degrees. So that's just going to go to 1. The counterclockwise torque, that's due to the weight of the log. So capital MG times R, and then that's also times sine of 90. But we know what R is equal to. We can make a substitution. So we'll substitute and set these equal to each other. MGX has to equal capital MGR where r is replaced with L over 2 minus d. So we can cancel out the g. It appears on both sides of the equation. And it looks like x is equal to capital M over lowercase m times the quantity L over 2 minus d. All right. So if we were given what fraction of the log was sticking out over the edge, then we could solve for the maximum distance the person can walk. In our example, we know that this ratio is already given as 3, right? 150 kilograms over 50 kilograms would be equal to 3. And we were also given that the length of the log is 10, but we weren't given this distance d. So uh, let's solve this another way. Let's try to determine what D would have to be equal to so that X could itself equal D. In other words, so that the person could walk all the way to the edge and then easily pick up the money. So if that's the case, if X equals D, then we have D equals M over M times quantity L over 2 minus D. If we rearrange, we get L over 2 minus D equals lowercase m over capital M times D. So that just came from cross-multiplying, right? If we add D to both sides of the equation, then we get L over 2 equals lowercase m over capital M plus 1 quantity times D. So as a final step, one, two, three, four, we can say D is equal to L divided by two times the quantity ratio of mass plus one. Okay, now I want you to think about what this result suggests. Let's take some ridiculous cases. So Let's imagine the case where the person is so light that we can say their mass is practically zero compared to the mass of the whole log. So in that case, how much of this can stick out over the edge? So if we plug in 
0 here, then we get d is just equal to l over 2. Well, wouldn't that be the case? If the person's weight doesn't really matter at all, then the tipping point is when the center of mass sits directly over the edge. So it would be more like this. Right? So now you've got L over 2 here, L over 2 here, and if you were to slide it any further to the right, of course it's going to tip. So this equation seems to work out for that ridiculous case. What if we had the case where the mass of the person is every bit as great as the mass of the log? So instead of a 50 kilogram person and a 150 kilogram log, what if the log is much lighter and itself is only 50 kilograms? Then how far could they go? Well, if we use our equation, if m and m are equal, this becomes L over 2 times the quantity 1 plus 1. In other words, becomes L over 4. So d would be L over 4, meaning a quarter of the log can stick out over the edge. Would that be right? So the picture would look something like this. So this would be three-fourths the length, and this would be one-fourth of the length. So the center of mass would be how far away, right? The center of mass would then also be one-fourth of the length, because this distance has to be half of the length. So if the person walks all the way to the edge, their lever arm is one-quarter L. That's their weight vector. The lever arm for the weight vector for the log is also one quarter L. Both the weight vectors are equal length because of our suggestion that the masses are equal. And so you can see this would definitely be a case where the clockwise torque and the counterclockwise torques are balanced. So you can think up any mass ratio you want. We found an equation that'll tell us what distance the of the log has to stick out over the edge if the person is going to walk all the way to the edge. So if you want to solve for it given the values we gave in this problem, uh, give it a shot. We said lowercase m is 50 kilogram, capital M is 150 kilogram, and L was 10 meters. See what you get as an answer.